Players have a wide selection of equipment to choose from when specking their character. Teeth, claws, stingers, spikes. Each weapon has distinct advantages and disadvantages in combat. Herbivore players tend to favor highly intimidating equipment like horns and antlers. In the African meta, things are taken to the extreme, with builds like the elephant, rhino, and cape buffalo rocking some of the most threatening tusks and horns in the entire game. So you might be surprised to learn that one of the most successful builds in the African savanna is the zebra, a build with no obvious weaponry to speak of. So what is it about the zebra build that has granted it such a dominant position in the savanna? We'll answer that question and many more in today's video, which was sponsored by CuriosityStream. To answer that question, let's zoom out a bit and discuss the incredible stats and abilities of the entire Equin faction, including zebras, horses, and donkeys. Let's begin with their stats. Right off the bat, it's plain to see that this is a highly mobility-centric build, with an above-average power stat to back it up. With slightly above average intelligence and fairly poor defense, HP, and stealth stats, at first glance, you might think that these stats belong to a rushdown predator, something like a wolf or eagle, something that can overwhelm its target with speed and power, and either finish the attack before the defender has a chance to counterattack, or weave in and out of the defender's effective range, chipping away at it or tiring it out. Clearly, stats don't tell the whole story here, as all equines are herbivores. So let's delve a little deeper into the abilities and strategies that horses and all their variants utilize to survive. Seeing as their highest stat is mobility, it's no surprise that an equine player's best defense against the predator player's attack is to run away. While not technically as fast as the max speed of a top tier predator, horse builds are able to maintain high speeds for much longer, and because of this, builds like the big cat or bear have little chance of catching them without an extremely stealthy ambush. The horse's specialized hooves grant them a bonus to burst movement speed and allow them to ignore the movement penalties of rocky terrain. The likelihood of a successful ambush is driven even lower due to the horse's solid intelligence stat, which allows it to engage in herd behaviors such as individuals keeping watch to alert vulnerable teammates of approaching enemies. Taking shifts keeping watch is really important in a party of horse players because horses need to spend massive amounts of time grazing. See, horses did not spec into the ruminant perk, which means they can't extract nearly as much energy from grass as builds like sheep and cows can. This was an intentional trade-off to keep the build much more lean and agile than ruminants, enabling them to dash quickly and jump great distances. But because the amount of time they need to spend feeding with their heads down is around double that of an equivalent-sized ruminant, there's no way they'd be able to avoid an ambush alone. If they do get attacked, the chase begins, and this is where one of the horse's other core abilities comes into play. Sweating. Now, I do need to address an inaccuracy I made in a previous video, my most viewed video to date, Are Humans OP, where I say the ability to sweat is uniquely human. This isn't entirely accurate. Horses also have the ability to sweat in order to dissipate heat. However, they're nowhere near as efficient at cooling down via sweating as humans are. For one main reason, body hair. Sweat doesn't evaporate off of a horse's body as easily it does a human, because sweat gets trapped in the hair on a horse's body. As such, Humans still absolutely crush horses in terms of thermoregulation during distance running. But sweating is still an extremely powerful ability that massively reduces a player's loss of stamina during a run, and thereby greatly increases the potential distance a player can travel. Anyways, if during a chase the horse player finds itself somehow unable to completely avoid an attack, that's when the other signature equine ability comes into play, their kick. Now, in relation to more typical combat moves, like biting, swiping, and stinging, kicking is generally seen as a rather janky attack style, mostly used as either a desperate combo breaker attempt, or the best option available to builds which haven't specced their characters to allow for better combat moves. Generally speaking, kicks don't deal that much damage. They're fairly telegraphed and easy to dodge, and they can even throw the user off balance if they miss. However, if we take a look at the horse's kick, we see an entirely different picture. The horse's kick hits with a force of around 2,000 PSI, putting it well above the power of a jaguar bite and just a bit below the power of a crocodile bite. Both of those builds are top tier specifically because of their incredible bite damage, so having a kick of roughly equivalent power is extremely useful. However, plenty of large builds have no issue dealing damage. Moose, elk, wildebeest, and other large ungulate builds can threaten insane damage if they connect with a charging slam. However, attacks like that are incredibly telegraphed, and most players have a decent amount of practice dodging them. 
In contrast, a horse's kick has incredible frame data, to the point where it's basically unreactable if you're within range, which I should add can be deceptively far. This makes approaching a defending equine player a lot more risky than most herbivore builds. However, the horse's kick has synergies that increase its utility far beyond what can be explained by its base damage and frame data. When it comes to defending themselves from attacking carnivore players, equine builds are at a huge advantage. Let me explain. So, most herbivore builds have only two options when confronted with an adversary. Fight or flight. Carnivore players know this and tailor their strategies to take advantage of the defending player's limited options. When wolves hunt large prey, like elk, their main advantage is to break the defending player's nerve and frighten it into fleeing. They will not commit to an attack if the defending player chooses to stand and fight. However, they will continue to pressure it with bluff charges and fakeouts, hoping to bait out a defensive attack. However, as mentioned before, these counterattacks are slow enough to be dodged on reaction, quickly lowering the elk's morale, especially as the rest of its herd likely gets further and further away. It's only after a prey animal starts fleeing that these predators will actually try to deal damage by attacking the hindquarters to inflict heavy bleed buildup. In order to stop these attacks, most herbivores will once again stop and turn to face their attackers, which just resets the situation back to the first phase. Horses, zebras, and donkeys can completely thwart this plan of attack, as their kick grants them an extremely valuable option, the ability to counterattack while fleeing. Since they don't need to stop and face their attackers in order to deal damage, and because their kicks are harder to dodge than horn charges, zebras have one of the highest KD ratios against lions and hunting dogs in the game. While it might not be as impressive and showy as having huge horns or antlers, there's no denying that this strategy is extremely effective at warding off attacks and escaping danger. On top of all the other benefits, kicking also allows the equine player to keep its vitals well out of reach and isn't exposing itself to a critical hit counterattack like some horn users do when they attack. It does have its limitations though. Kicking backwards requires specific positioning, which, unless your character has 360 degree vision, will make your attacks less accurate. And on the odd chance that your opponent does get in front of you and land a grab before you're able to turn away, your options to fight back will be fairly limited and nowhere near as powerful. Now, I do want to mention that unlike many ruminant herbivores, which only have lower teeth, equine players do possess a full set of upper and lower teeth that are able to deliver quite powerful bites. So they aren't completely helpless when facing an enemy head on. But nonetheless, the unidirectional nature of their strongest attack option does mean that some counterplay is available. Next, let's discuss the advantages and disadvantages of the different variants of the equine build. We'll start with the horse, the most well-known of the bunch. Horses undoubtedly have the best base stats of the group, with higher power and more HP being the most obvious things that scale with size. They've also got the fastest top speed. However, perhaps even more importantly, the horse's higher intelligence stat enables cross-species team strategies, which can lead to some incredibly broken combos. Zebras have a slightly lower base stat total, although this change isn't really enough to affect their playstyle. They're still perfectly capable of escaping attacks using their speed and endurance, and punishing overly aggressive enemies with a devastating kick. In addition to all this though, the zebra's unique stripe pattern grants it a few extra bonus perks. Because this pattern helps break up their outline and obscure their position, especially when grouped up, attacks against zebras incur a slight accuracy penalty. Surprisingly, this debuff even applies to insects, resulting in zebras taking significantly less damage from parasites than other similarly sized builds. In exchange though, the zebra's intelligence stat is a fair bit lower, to the point where zebras are unable to engage in the same team combos as horses. Donkeys are a bit of an outlier group, with the lowest power stat of the group. They have the highest intelligence stat, but tend to actually prefer solo play. They can be trained to become a useful party member, but they aren't naturally suited to this style of gameplay. And although they're quite capable of dishing out serious damage with their kicks, donkey mains also tend to favor the bite move in combat, a somewhat poorly optimized build in my opinion. It's no surprise that despite horses and zebras having quite solid matchups against both canid and felid opponents, donkeys end up experiencing a fair bit of difficulty in part due to their smaller size, but also because maybe they just don't realize the potential power of a well-placed kick. Of the three main equine classes, it's a tough call which one I think is the most viable. I think they're definitely all at least high B tier. Personally, I do think horses take the top spot, and I'd even give them the rank of low A tier. See, despite being originally from the North American server, horses have successfully established invasive populations all across the overworld, including places in Africa that even zebras have difficulty surviving in. This is the premise for the incredible documentary Stallions of the Namib Desert, which chronicles the descendants of a small group of horses abandoned by World War I soldiers a century ago. This documentary is available to watch right now on CuriosityStream, the sponsor of today's video. 
CuriosityStream is an amazing subscription streaming service with thousands of high-quality documentaries and non-fiction titles. In addition to Stallions of the Nama Desert, CuriosityStream also has a bunch of my personal favorite documentaries, including Out of the Cradle and Amazing Dino World. In addition, every new CuriosityStream member also gets access to Nebula, a streaming service made by and for creators like myself. I'm currently working hard putting together a brand new fully 3D animated original Versus series, but in the meantime, I also recommend some of the originals made by fellow creators, such as the Modern Conflict series made by YouTuber Real Life Lore. It's especially relevant in today's meta. To get access to both of these awesome services for only a buck 25 a month, head to curiositystream.com slash tierzoo or click the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching, thanks especially to my patrons on Patreon, and until next time, good luck out there.